Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's go over parsing this changelog file that we're looking at so that if we were to input something like v1.92, we would get back a bullet point list of all the changes for this specific release. Now, I didn't just wake up this morning thinking I was going to make a YouTube video on this specifically, but I do think it's kind of an interesting problem because earlier in the week I was doing some client work where someone hired me to do just that. So this is being extracted from like a real world project. Now in their project, it was a little bit more involved, but, and by more involved, they mean like there was more steps to the equation. Like they didn't just want to arbitrarily just get these bullet points for no reason, but uh, basically, you know, they just want to be able to input a get tag, which is this specific tag here, and then send a Slack notification out with all of the changes for that tag. Basically it was something as that was a part of their CI CD pipeline, but we're not going to go into the details of that in this video. That would be way too much to cover, but uh, we are going to focus on basically creating a shell, a shell script. Uh, we're going to glue together a couple of Unix tools to solve this problem, hopefully in a couple of minutes. So when it comes to trying to solve problems like this, like the first thing I try to do is find patterns in the file because you know, you're not always going to be working with a markdown file and you know, your text problem might be different, but the goal here is to basically create a workflow, you know, figure out how to solve the problem so that you can uh, apply this solution to multiple different types of problems, not just this specific problem. So, you know, part of that routine for me is kind of figuring out like, you know, what are some patterns in this text file? So our, pro our problem or our goal is to, you know, input something like v.1.92 and get all of the bullet points for that release, but nothing higher, nothing lower. You know, we want to parse out all this stuff as well, you know, including the version number itself. But uh, before we get into all that, it's like we need to kind of, like, what is the pattern to even get these bullet points? So I thought about it for a little bit, and really the pattern is, you know, one, looking for the line where our tag is defined. So that could be v.192, or it could be 1.90, like whatever the input happens to be. And well, if we take a look at that, like how can we programmatically or even like at a human level determine, you know, when these bullet points end? So like we can't just be like, oh, you know, when we have like a new line or something like that, uh, it needs to be a little bit more specific. So if you look at it here, well, the, the more specific component really is reaching a line after the current like tagged line that starts with two pound symbols and a space. So basically, you know, we want to return uh, this, right? It's like up until this point. Uh, technically, I guess up until this point, right? It's like we want to get the lines that start with the D input tag that we want all the way to the next line that happens to start with pound pound space. And it's like once we have that, now we're dealing with a much smaller problem, right? We're no longer dealing with an entire file with like all sorts of stuff everywhere. It's like now we, once we have this range of stuff, we can filter it. Uh, based on additional rules. Like maybe, well, when you look at this problem, like what's the pattern here? Well then, I mean, this one came to me right away and it will probably come to you pretty quickly too. Uh, if you want to give yourself a second to think about it and pause the video, you know, what's the pattern here to only pull out the specific bullet points given what you see that's selected on the screen now? Uh, the answer there is, you know, all lines that happen to start with a hyphen. So, you know, when we have this selected, if we grab all the lines that start with a hyphen, suddenly we have a list of all the bullets. And then if we rewind based on the, uh, the previous problem that we solved, you know, now we have all the bullets for a specific release. And that's exactly what we want. Now, there are a couple of edge cases here that we will tackle. Like, you know, what, what happens when maybe someone creates a, you know, a, uh, a bullet point here where they just have so many words that they decide to wrap it to two lines like this, right? This is more stuff uh, related to the above bullet, right? It's like, well, ideally what you'd want to do is to maybe take lines that also start with a space and like roll them up so that they're part of like the previous bullet item, because in the Slack output, you would want all of that to happen on one line. You know, this, this isn't a specific, like separate bullet. So yeah, there's edge cases like that. That is one edge case. And another edge case, if you jump to the bottom of the file, like if they're just starting a brand new change log, then there is no like pound pound space after the first matching one. Like if this was uh, V1 point or V0.10, there is nothing below that. So like the other edge case to account for is maybe, you know, reaching the end of file instead of pound pound space if pound pound space doesn't exist. So we are going to solve all of that. Um, but now 
Let's actually open up a terminal here. And uh, by the way, you know, if you actually want to follow along, you can do that. So let me just uh, open up a browser here. And because this file that we're looking at actually came from, I also need to resize this. It came from one of my open source repos. So if you go to github.com slash nickjj, if I can spell my own name, Ansible Docker, then down here you'll see a changelog file. And uh, this changelog file that we're looking at on GitHub is now the same file that I have on disk. Although I did make one change here. Um, when I released one uh, v1.92, I accidentally put the date below the bullets instead of above it. Uh, in this case, that won't matter. If you want to change that to match what I have on, on disk here, which I did fix it, uh, which I will fix in the next release of that role, um, then yeah. yeah, in either case, it'll work because no matter what, like that line's getting ignored. But now let's maybe just go over tackling this problem, right? So the first step of the problem is how do we get this range, like, you know, from the current input tag to the next line with the pound pound space. And there is a set command that we can do to actually uh, solve this problem. And the interesting thing is like, once you know kind of what the problem is, you can just go ahead and start Googling for it. So that's what I did. Like, you know, I Googled around and I found basically, now I forget exactly what I Googled for. It was something like get text in between specific range. I don't know, it was like Monday and today's Saturday. So it was like six, five, six days ago. Um, but what I did find was this one set command where, and we're gonna type it out and then uh, I'll go over like the implementation of it after we start typing it. So let's for now, let's just hard code something in like the V.192. And uh, what else do we have to do here? Yes, the end of the line, and then that ends there. And this is like where the range aspect of using set comes into play. But again, like we're just, thrown out characters here, and I'll explain this in a second. And changelog is the input file. So if I do this, I should hope to see the correct output, which would be uh, basically what's selected above right now. So let's see to make sure. I don't have any typos here. So apparently I have typos because live coding, right? So let me see. I actually do have this code uh, a little bit off screen just for reference because some of the stuff that we're gonna be typing at the end is basically <laughs> just like hands flying on the keyboard and random characters coming out. Uh, so let's see what actually happened here. So I am going to just copy what I had. So what did I what did I mess up here? I just copied this from uh, a text file off camera. So said blah blah blah. Uh, what did I miss? Hmm. Well, let's just see what what happens now. Okay, so we we did get that range. Uh, I don't want to waste too much time trying to figure out what I missed. Uh, you'll probably see it before me. Uh, maybe I'll just make an arrow or something when I edit this video later. But you can see here that we got the range, right? With this one set command on the changelog file. Uh, it's called like a range pattern specifically in said. But what we're doing is we're passing in dash n, which basically tells said, as far as I know, uh, not to print anything for any of the matching patterns. Uh, again, like this is one of those things where, you know, I am not an expert when it comes to like said flags, especially the last component of what we're going to do. Like I literally copy pasted it and I looked at that and I'm like, aliens, like that's how crazy it looks. But the interesting thing is like, once you see the working solution, like once you see the working code, it's very, not, not very easy, but it's very possible to look at that and be like, my problem's a little bit different, but here's the components that I need to change to make it work for me. So the next part is basically setting up the uh, said range. So if you take a look here, you'll notice that I do have a comma in the middle here. And if you've used said before, uh, you, you know, you can use said for a number of things. You can do like in place edits in a file, like doing a find replace and things like that. But if you take a look here on the left hand side, like before we reach that comma, then we have a regular expression here. And this regular expression that's highlighted here, it basically says that look for lines that start with pound pound space and then our input tag that we want, right, v.192. If I were to rerun this with v.191, we'll get a different range, right, just for the v.191. And, and that's what we see over here. So we have that, right? So that's our regular expression. And then also at the very end, we have the dollar sign. Basically, uh, we want to capture, we want to be very specific with our regular expression to only capture lines that start with this. And it happens to end uh, right, like the line ends right after our tag. So the one or zero or whatever it happens to be. Now we have the comma here, which I guess is part of like said's range characteristics. So it allows us to, to pop in a second regular expression. And this one is 
sort of similar, right? It's like lines that start with pound, pound, and then space. Because remember, if we're doing 1.91 as our range here, we want to go all the way up until this point here, basically, right? It's like the next tag, but we don't know what that tag version number is, so we're just going to start with uh, pound, pound, space. So he, that is our range, like our two regular expressions from here to here. And then the slash p at the end, this is something like print the remaining line. So it's like something you would use in combination with dash n. In fact, like, let's see, like what happens if I actually remove the dash n? I don't know. Okay, so it returns everything. So we need to put that back in. I guess that really does mean like, don't print anything. And then let's go ahead and take a look at what's in between this range. And then the slash p will print that. And then we just give the input that uh, we want to do this on the change log file. So there's our range. And now the next thing we want to do is we actually want to pipe that into grep. And then what we can do is another uh, regular expression here for lines that start with a dash, right? And if we do that and we run that, then it's like we just get lines that start with a hyphen or a dash. Well, let me use another example here, like the v.1921, one, just so we have a couple items to work with instead of one. And, uh, you know, let's actually just see what happens when we do this for uh, v.10. Like that's the, the bottom of the change log. And we just get the initial release. And if we take a look down here, we'll see that, you know, that one edge case we're thinking about, like the end of file, that is just taken care of for us by uh, said, like it doesn't really matter, which is amazing actually. It makes things quite simple. Now, there's more, you know, a little bit more pieces to this puzzle. So in my case, I was actually taking this information and throwing it over to Slack using basically like a Slack webhook. And what I wanted to do was format the Slack message in such a way where I wanted to replace these bullet points with a greater than sign just to make them look a little bit more nicely formatted in Slack. And there's another Unix tool that we can use here called TR. And TR lets you basically replace characters, like replace one character with another character. So this was actually pretty super simple. Uh, all I want to do now is given this output that we have, uh, I want to replace the hyphen with a greater than sign because that's what I want the item to eventually be sent over to Slack as, right? And let me go back here and I'll, I'll put in an another uh, another version number here, just so we have more items to deal with. And you can see here, you know, there is our list of like quoted lines and this looks really nice in Slack. Now I mentioned earlier, uh, there is an issue here where, you know, maybe if you wrap this line and like, you know, this is another line, we add some space there. Like if you were to have your change log like this, like what happens when we run this command? Uh, it seems that, you know, this line doesn't get picked up at all. Now, this makes complete sense, right? Because our, our grep here in the middle of the chain is only looking for lines that start with a hyphen. But this line does not start with a hyphen. It starts with two spaces. So now technically we need to just go back and, and modify our grep command to look for either a hyphen or uh, one or more spaces. So in this case, let's see what happens when we do that. And now we actually get nothing back. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, okay. So when we start using like the or expression with, with grep, we need to basically configure grep to use the extended regular expressions, and you can do that with dash capital E. And, and now when we take a look at this, we actually have uh, the line that we want. And, you know, if I take this and make it to be one space instead of two, then it's going to work. And if my editor supported tabs, because tabs automatically get uh, converted to spaces, you know, we would get that as well because the uh, the backslash s or whatever it, it includes tabs. But you can see here, you know, this still works. Like, it's one or more spaces. Now, if you had zero spaces here, now this is not going to work. But at some point, you need to just basically bite the bullet and like, you know, the file is structured, so it needs to be formatted in a certain way. Plus, if you were to really format this to like you know, 80 characters or whatever, you would indent it like this. If you didn't indent it, it would look ugly anyways. So I'm totally cool with this implementation. Now, the last part of this deal is to really, you know, and if we rerun this again, it's back to just being like floating there. But, you know, again, this is not what we want. We actually want the hello world to be a part of the previous bullet. And this is where things get crazy. Like, I'm not even going to bother explaining this one or typing this one, uh, but I will... Of course, you know, leave this command in the description so you can copy paste it. But I mean, if you run that, you can see that it actually pulled up the hello world into the previous bullet and now life is good. 
But when you look at this, let me just zoom in a little bit more on this thing so it's all on one line. There we go. And we take a look at this, like aliens, right? It's like literally hands being thrown on the keyboard, coming up with characters that look like maybe this works, but <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like I Googled this and like, this is a Stack Overflow solution, um, which I did credit in the script itself where I'm using this, but I don't know the name of that offhand, but uh, I'll Google for it again and I'll just leave it in the description because I'm not taking credit for creating that. And I'm sure like any other problem, if you break it down step by step, you know, if I went here and I actually uh, looked through said's documentation, I can figure out exactly what all of this does in probably about 30 minutes. Thing is though, I actually don't care. Like I don't care enough to know the inner gory details of this. All I care enough to know is that when I do this, it works and I need to know what to change to make it to continue to work. Now, the interesting part here is basically uh, this part here. So this is similar to using backslash S in a regular expression, but instead of just capturing new lines as well, it's because that's considered white space as well, uh, this just captures spaces or tabs. So basically, and you need to escape the plus here. So this basically says like lines that have uh, one or more spaces or tabs, they ultimately get pulled up into the previous line. Like that's where I'm gonna stop on that explanation because I literally can't even explain it any more than that. Uh, this is a, an absolutely insane one. If you've done something like this in the past and you want to drop in a really good explanation of this command in a comment, uh, that would be amazing. Uh, I would love to read that. I'll, I'll for sure like that. And uh, I'm sure others will find it useful. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty complex text parsing problem. But other than this crazy, crazy said command here, the other things are actually, you know, very, very straightforward, very, very easy to put together. In my opinion, it's like, once you just know that said allows you to, to do a search for ranges, uh, you can do some really wild stuff. Like, I mean, maybe you can think of like, you know, what are some text parsing problems that you may solve using the same like strategy or similar strategy strategies, uh, let me know in the comments below. I think that's a really cool thing. And if you do that, uh, please throw up a gist or something, you know, with some sample data and your solution. So this way we can all benefit from uh, seeing, you know, this apply to different projects. And uh, on that note, you know, I think that's pretty much it here. We've done our job, uh, client is happy. And on that note, please like the video if you liked it because it does help a lot. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.